What's up, man? How's it going? Good, how are you? Good, good to see you as always. Yeah. Uh, I want to share with everybody today about short-term rentals versus long-term rentals. I'm a long-term rental kind of a guy, and it, you are as well, but you've got some short-term stuff. Yeah, we do. So why don't you take us through, kind of show you, show us what it looks like, and maybe talk about it a little bit. Hey, sounds good. Let's go ahead. Yeah, so this place is nice. Yeah. I, I actually, just a qu quick backstory. I remember, I remember this property before you bought it. I think we were both looking at it around the same time. And uh, I passed on it. It wasn't a property that I wanted to buy for whatever reason. And obviously you didn't, and you've done some good things to it. Yeah, we completely so. rehabbed it from start to finish. I mean, got it a lot of it and started over. But yeah, so as a short-term rental, you, the income potential is a little different. So I yeah. paid it from that standpoint so I can make the numbers work a little bit. Whereas for both of us, the long-term rental wouldn't have been as profitable. Yeah. That's why we had chose these properties. So if you hear, he's talking about the income of a short-term rental. We'll touch on that here in a little bit, but yeah. show, show us through. Yeah. Let, let's see what the rest of it looks like. So what do we got? We walked into the kitchen, kitchen area. Now, what do you call this? The dining room right. kind of gathering area? Yep. And okay. It's a small property. It's like 700 square feet. Okay. Uh, two bedrooms, one bath. Perfect. One floor. Really small, but it's perfect for a short-term rental. Yeah. So. Is there? Do you think one bedroom, two bedroom, three bedroom, four bedroom short-term rentals get better or worse, or does it matter? Is there a good, uh, yeah. good place to be? Yeah. So all I have is two bedroom ones. So that's all the experience I have really. The <laughs> house that we'll see later on is a one bedroom house, so that would be a little new for us, but. We've only done two bedrooms, and this seems to be a good sweet spot just because it's you're competing against hotels, kind of. Yeah. So if you can offer, you know, one to two rooms, that's pretty nice. Because most bedrooms are just, or most hotels are just one studio. Right. Bed. Yeah, with say two beds, and you've got two beds, obviously, yeah. and a couch that pulls out, or no? No couch in this one. Okay. What house we have? Uh, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Show them the bathroom, or let's show us the bathroom. Oh, you got washer and dryer in there, even. Yeah. Oh my God, this bathroom is huge. All right. Yeah, so part of this was, it's hard to explain how the walls were before, but originally you would enter off the kitchen into the bathroom, and this was just a weird little room. So we just sandwiched the rooms together to make one bigger laundry bathroom combo. Do you put this in specifically for your people that stay, or what is, what would, what's the reason to have that in there? Yeah, so if people are staying longer than a week, they might want to do their laundry. And then also the cleaning lady uses it for the linens and towels and whatnot. Yeah. And uh, swap over. Yeah, that's a good touch. I like that. Yeah. I like that. And the bedrooms are small. They're only like 7 by 10 or 8 by 10 or something, but it's uh, plenty big for us. What's, is this a full-size bed or queen-size bed? Queen bed? Queen-size bed. Queen-size bed? Yeah, I mean... That's all you need, right? Yeah. Nice, nice. Man, this is this is designed really well. Who who uh, who designed this? My wife did all the designing on these. Um, that's like her forte. She loves doing that kind of stuff. So she kind of had free reign to kind of pick all the finishes out and just uh, tell us what she wanted where. So, yeah. That's and that's nice. another thing with short-term rentals. It's more of a an experience than just a place to live, like a long-term rental might be. So you want to play up the experience and make it cozy and um, inviting, so. Yeah, so let's talk about that a little bit. As you'll see, uh, you've got this house right here. You got another one immediately next door and then another project that'll be, that'd be pretty interesting yeah. even next door to that, right? What's your, what's your plan or why did you do that? I mean, maybe it plays off that experience, right? Yeah, yeah, so we actually stayed in an Airbnb in Panama and it was like, like a duplex and a house and it was all kind of closed into each other. So it'd be kind of nice if you were traveling with families where you wanted a place to stay, but not with your family. Yeah. You know, or if it's, you know, parents and laws or whatever. But yeah. So that's kind of the same idea. We just took that concept and replicated it here and we got three properties right in a row. So if someone could rent out all three, if they have a bigger family coming to town, um, gives them the privacy, but also the convenience of being really close. Yeah. So. Makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, and the, and they're so close to each other that like 
There, there could be a gathering area out there. Everyone could maybe, you know, have a fire pit if you have one out there or something along those lines. Yeah, we might add that later on. Um, we talked about putting like a pergola back there with a fire pit or something just to have a little communal space if people wanted to gather. Yeah. And maybe even just meet other traveling guests because Airbnb people are short term rental people. They kind of like, you know, the experience of meeting new people in different locations. So that's cool. That could be another added bonus. Very cool. Yeah. So when we first came in, you talked about the income of these things. So let's let's share what that looks like with, with everybody else. I, I'll share what I would see, you know, as a long-term rental on a, on a little house like this, you know, maybe you're renting it out for $750 a month, something like that. So long-term, very, you know, you're going to have a year-long lease, things like that, where you don't necessarily have a year-long lease, but tell us about the income side. Yeah, so the income's a lot different. It's like a totally different business than long-term rentals. Yeah. From my limited experience, only doing this for like a year and a half now, I would say the income is two, two to three times probably closer to three times as much as a long-term rental, but you have more expenses. So even though you gross more, you don't necessarily net that same difference because you have, you know, cable and internet and utilities and lawn care, which normally would be pushed on to the long-term tenant. Yeah. You have more expenses, but you have more income, so. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, you touched on that. So you have to pay all the utilities no matter what, right? Yeah. Because someone may only stay for a night. You have to pay all of the uh, lawn care, like you mentioned, um, is so you talk about you gross maybe three times more. So if I'm at 750, you know you're grossing 2100 or so for this place alone. Mm -hmm. uh, that's substantial. I mean, yeah. so you also said you don't net necessarily three times as much more, but surely it's more net than 750. What do you think you net off of that 2100? Yeah, so net would be around 50 percent profit margin. So if it brings in the 2800 like you said, we might net 1400 Okay. To be round rule of thumb numbers of what I've seen with my numbers so far. Nice, nice. So. Yeah, that's good. And the only other the only other thing that is going to be different business model-wise is for long-term rental stuff of mine, you know, I'm, I'm not cleaning something daily, potentially. I'm not cleaning something weekly, and I'm, uh, I'm not having the, the management side of that that's so uh, prominent in short-term rental side yeah. of things, right? So... Yeah. Tell me about the management side of things. Yeah, so the management stuff is pretty heavy because you might have, you know, you might have daily messages with different guests, especially the more units you have, just like a long term, the more work it is. Um, and yeah, these are more, you know, you're talking to people weekly, coordinating the cleaning and all yeah. that. So yeah. it is definitely more management intensive. Uh, the nice thing about it is it it's all done virtually. I mean, my, my wife manages all of our properties, our short term rentals. So she can do that from her phone and it's pretty easy. It's just like sending text messages and yeah. Um, but yeah, so Excellent. definitely definitely a lot more work. Yeah. But, um, it but, has the income potential. And one of the bonuses to being in here that often is you can kind of keep up on the property a little bit more too. Yeah. Whereas if I'm not in a property for a year, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of things can change. Whereas you're gonna have someone in here pretty regularly and yeah. If something drastic changed, they could point that out to you. Yeah, yeah, so that's nice. The property is always in tip top shape yeah. all the time, which is really nice too. So, yeah. All right, so. Another, oh, sorry, really quick. That's another thing too. So, if you ever did decide to sell, I mean, we're ready to list it today. Exactly. It's kind of nice. Not that it, you know, getting a long term rental up and ready isn't a big deal either, but it's just kind of, we could sell like pretty quickly if we needed to or wanted to. Yeah. And now that you mention it, you had to furnish this entire place too, yeah. right? So. Yeah. Just another initial initial expense. Mm -hmm, for sure. So, yeah. all right. So you've kind of touched on. Uh, we've seen what it looks like, the income side of things, the experience side of things. There's something cool going on down at the other end of this property that I think everybody else is going to want to see as well too. So before we tell them what it is, can we take a look? Yeah, let's go. All right, let's do it. All right, so we're going to show everybody what you got going on here. But why don't you just tell us? The well, surprise is out. Tiny so container house. Tiny house because it's only 500 square feet. Okay. So that constitutes a tiny house. And then it's obviously, obviously built out of shipping containers. So, yeah. So well, let's yeah. go inside and yeah. get out of the wind and kind of see what you got going on. Okay. This is it. This is it. Yeah. Come on in. All right. So tell us what you've done. Uh, I kind of know what you've done, but uh, this is two separate containers, right? So what'd yeah. you have to do in here? So we had to cut these two walls out in the middle here. Yeah. So just a rectangle box before. Yeah. And then we cut that out and installed this giant I-beam. And um, 
Yeah, we had to redo the floors. Because underneath this floor is this spray foam insulation. So we just rip out the floors, set it back down. Nice. So this is a pretty small space. How does this lay out? Like, what is this? Or this, what, this what goes where? Kitchen, dining room, living room, and the washroom dryer. <laughs> all right. So this is all in, this, so this is like 300 square feet right here. No beds down here, though. No beds. Oh, you'll be all right then. Yeah. Bed and bath is upstairs. OK. And your front door is going to be right there? Yeah, so you won't come in those doors that we came in on. You'll just walk in here. And then there will be a barn door here. So right where this is will be a washer and dryer. Ah, OK. And underneath the stairs will be um, electrical panel, water meter, um, tankless water heater, stuff like that. Nice, nice, OK. So you'll come out here. We're going to make this area like a small dining area. OK, like two just a couple people. people. Yeah. And then right along here, there'll just be a couch, TV on that wall. Nice. And this corner is the kitchen. Makes so sense. It's going to be a tiny kitchen. It'll be a galley style, so I'll have um, probably the sink here and then fridge and stove. There won't be many cabinets, but... I'm surprised you didn't just do an, just do an L along the wall. Why have anything jut out? Yeah, I might do that, so I haven't decided that yet. So the main thing was getting these figured out, because these take up a lot of space. Yeah. See how far they come out from my kitchen layout. Yeah. So I might do an L shape, but I don't know. Or I thought about making this like a bar top. Gotcha. You know, that side. But I don't think I have enough room by the time I get a couch in here. Right, yeah. If you did the, just the L over there, then you're leaving that whole space open instead yeah. of kind of cutting it off. And I might do that. I just, uh, that's the next step for me is to figure out a kitchen layout so I can figure out where the rest of the windows go. Yeah. All right, well, show us upstairs real quick. Okay. Watch your head. Short people. Tall people. Yeah. yeah. Looks like you need to cut some headroom out still. Yeah. I need to cut that whole section out. Okay. So you don't have a floor up here yet. No. But this is this is what it looked like then before your floor. Yeah, so it was all these like seat channels. So we had to rip out the floor and it's like an inch and a quarter thick floor, so it was some tough stuff. Yeah. All right, and this will just be the bedroom, right? Bedroom and then bathroom. So we'll have to cut this out and extend it over onto the rooftop deck. Okay. But yeah, bed will go there with the giant window. Yeah, nice. And then there'll be a door here to exit onto the rooftop deck. That'd be cool. Yeah, really neat. It'd be very cool. And it'll be a full-size bathroom. I mean, it'll probably just have a shower. No tub or nothing, but shower, tile shower with some nice glass and then Toilet. Yeah, cool. All right. Yeah, so you, you don't see many people buying shipping containers to build a house out of. Yeah. Why are you doing it? Um, it's kind of just been an idea I've had for a long time, and then there's some, there's some popularity with these all over the world. Yeah. Building house stuff, shipping containers. Um, and I never had a good plan with doing it because it wouldn't work as a flip necessarily. Yeah. It wouldn't work as a long-term rental. Yeah. So when we found out about the short-term rental idea, I had, that was my aha moment where I was like, oh, I can build a container house yeah. and rent it out short-term. Yeah, yeah. That where then it starts to make financial sense because of the a income. A little bit, yeah. A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm still pushing it a lot, but I mean, that's really my only exit strategy, so yeah. it's risky, but um, it's more of just like a passion project than anything. Yeah, so you get to build something that you're passionate about or that's kind of cool and not many people are doing, all while tying it into the experience of your Airbnbs that you have right here. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's yeah. pretty cool. So, yeah. all right, yeah, so when you started this, obviously, I see your plans there. You had to uh, get approval to build this from the city. What would what that look like? What kind of approval did you have to get? I was really worried about that part because what I yeah. it was so unique and it was the first one in Lincoln to ever be done. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I just went ahead and followed the steps like a normal I can build a normal house. Okay. Um, I had to go through the urban design um, committee to yeah. have a meeting to see if this would actually fit the characteristics of the neighborhood. Yeah. Um, and thankfully, they it passed and they, they loved the idea. I had to like turn it 90 degrees so the front door is facing the street like the other two houses were, but that was the only thing they asked for, really. So. That's really, that's not much. Yeah. The nice thing is, is that you're near downtown too. Yeah. So. I don't know if this necessarily fits the, the the neighborhood, but it fits towards downtown where they've got new and upcoming modern stuff. Yeah, so the nice thing about, I picked this specific location to do this because it 
because I knew that there were so many different types of structures around here. Like, yeah. There's a warehouse over there, there's an apartment, there's single family, there's a parking lot. Yeah. So it's, I mean, it's a mishmash of a bunch of different stuff. So. Absolutely. I mean, they would never approve this in a traditional neighborhood. <laughs> yeah. With, like brick ranches and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So they were, they were all for it. I think they see the, you know, the potential with the hay market and what they're doing down there, and it's only kind of coming this way a little bit. So. Just the attraction, right? To yeah. to grow the community and, and yeah. just be a part of the community. Yeah, so they were they were pretty easy to work with so far. So that's cool. Yeah. Awesome. All right, so we gotta wrap this up. Tell me, give me an action item for people out there that maybe are stuck or wanting to do something like this or short term rentals or just anything. So maybe some advice. Yeah. So I just I'm a dreamer. I just set my dreams really high. Yeah. And uh, this is just one of those dreams that's unfulfilling. So that's just kind of what I would challenge everyone to do: just set high dreams and just shoot for it. And get after it, right? Get after it, yeah. One of the things that uh, that I always like to say is, uh, take action. It's the foundational key to success. Yeah. To take action. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Hey, I appreciate the time. Thank you. Always good to see you, man. You. I hope you guys enjoyed that. A little look into some short-term rental stuff and and even a container house, which isn't something normal that you would see, and kind of a whole experience is how you can build around uh, short-term rentals and, and generate even more income versus long-term rentals. Not something that I do, but uh, maybe it's something you're interested in, and I hope it helps. If you got any questions for me, or even for Josh, leave them below. We'll make sure and get back to you, and as always, we'll see you next time.